I'm actually not going to talk about the cabbage. I'm going to try and uh, focus this only on PCI uh, because there's so much confusion about this area that is uh, of importance. First of all, let's say that, that the substrate for this is, is fairly, was fairly well established many, many years ago, long before the use of troponins with CKMB. And the, what occurred when troponins were introduced, because they're so much more sensitive, was that this paradigm, which people liked and which was studied in a large number of well-done trials, changed. And what has happened is a reluctance in particularly because of the use of cut points, of different cut points, which I'll try and show you, has changed with troponin and people have gotten confused. And I'll try and deal with that. What we did in the Global Task Force was to assume a normal baseline troponin value in order to make the diagnosis of a peri-procedural MI. Joe already, already talked to you about the convention that we chose post with the 99th percentile. But I want to focus on the normal troponin baseline because it's key. Because in point of fact, if you have an elevated troponin, you know that CKMB is also rising, albeit slower and to a higher level. And once one has a rising biomarker value of any sort, how much of that subsequent rise is due to the event that caused it to rise, and how much is due to a procedure is impossible to tell. If one looks at the data, one can certainly make the argument that most of the rise that occurs is related to the ongoing incident and not the procedure. These are data from the Mayo Clinic database if you have a normal baseline troponin defined as the 99th percentile, and this is a key issue which we'll talk about in a moment, you have very, very minor elevations in troponin. Look how much greater they are if you have an elevated value at baseline. The same thing for CKMB. If you have a normal baseline our normal value at Mayo is 6.2. You barely have an increase, but look what happens if you have an elevated baseline. So that there is a substantial percentage, most likely, of the acute event that contributes to whatever elevations we see. Now this is in the acute setting, and I will come back to the more stable chronic disease patient at the end. If one looks at the data that substantiates the use of the 99th percentile, this is just one analysis and I show it to you because it uses troponin T which we happen to use at Mayo, there's a substantial increase in the number of patients identified at risk using the 99th percentile. So if you're using some higher value, which people tend to do and less than 40% of this country is using the 99th percentile as its cutoff. You've got patients who have elevations or who are elevating their values right to start. So if one looks at this meta-analysis that came out in the quarterly journal of medicine that suggested that post-PCI elevations of biomarkers were prognostic and important, here is the MACE data I could show you the same thing for the mortality data, but I won't. And let's first eliminate those studies that use the value that equates troponin with CKMB, the so-called ROC value, a very high value, almost invariably a log higher than the 99th percentile. Now let's take out the markedly insensitive assays that nobody would use anymore. Let's take out some made-up values that were above the the 10% CV value, and let's take out now the 10% CV value. <laughs> so we have no studies. And this is one study that we did. It used the 10% CV value and failed to find prognostic significance of a baseline elevation 
or if there was a baseline if there was a baseline elevation a subsequent elevation so to no baseline elevation but using point three a subsequent analysis was done and said well let's look at point oh one to point oh three and there's the separation it's almost identical to what you would expect from the night prognostic effects of the 99th percentile so there is one study it wasn't included in a meta-analysis published by Abby Prasad of 5,500 patients in which we looked at exactly this issue. 63 had a normal pre-PCI troponin, 43 had an elevated value, and they were the ones with elevated troponins were sicker. As in the first data set I showed you, elevations post-PCI, if you had a normal baseline value of the 99th percentile, were quite modest for both troponin and CKMB. Now here are the prognostic data. This is all based on the baseline value. The baseline value is extraordinarily prognostic if it's elevated. We were unable to find additional prognostic information in the post-PCI values, no matter how high it went. If one looks at the baseline value that is less than the 99th percentile, you can see that if you stay below the 99th percentile, you do quite well. If you end up going above the 99th percentile, you have a small increment that's associated with a p-value of 0.048. However, 8 of the 13 events were non-cardiac and were in patients who were severely ill, such as cancer patients in whom the PCI was done for humane sorts of reasons rather than doing more definitive procedures. So no cardiovascular signal short term at 30 days. And of course, if the baseline was elevated, a tremendously important prognostic signal. This probably reflects the baseline risk of these patients, whether it is because their anatomy, which we know in an acute setting correlates with more per adverse anatomy, whether it's by angiography or by IVUS. But what about long-term? Maybe long-term's different. Well, here the baseline analysis, again, showing that based on the baseline value, there's tremendous prognostic significance to those baseline values. If one looks, it's got a very, very high odds ratio. If one does a multivariate model, here are the other <coughs> issues that contribute to prognosis. And here's having an isolated post-PCI troponin value, not of significance. So if one utilizes proper cutoffs, one minimizes this. The same thing was found with CKMB, no signal that was prognostically important. Now these data are very similar to the data recently published by Cavallini. This is a blow up of this picture here and it may, barely makes statistical significance. This study used the 10% CV value, still higher than I would advocate for you, but when they corrected these data for other factors of illness that were present at baseline, it was no longer statistically significant. So one of the things that's happening is as assays are getting more sensitive, even though people are still not using the right cutoffs, the post-PCI significance of elevations is disappearing. Now, what about stable patients? Because we all see stable patients. Well, unfortunately, stable patients can have elevations in troponin too. This is from a study called Heart and Soul, looking at these elevations. And do you think they're prognostically significant? Wildly so. This is from the event registry, 
published in circulation, again, a mishmash of assays, unfortunately, without utilizing all of the cutoffs and the caveats I've talked to you about, but the group that had a baseline troponin pos positivity were a high-risk group post-PCI. It's the baseline value that is so terribly important. And this is with a gamish of different assays, not necessarily utilizing the cutoffs that we would recommend. So where do these data take us? Well, I'd suggest the following. The present definition, whether it's threefold or onefold or tenfold, will define cardiac injury because that's what troponin means. A threefold change is likely to be to overcome any problems that we have with conjoint biologic or analytic variability. So we can say for sure it's different than the baseline if it goes that far. But it's unlikely that these elevations will manifest prognostic significance. Might we find a group where we occluded the LAD for three hours, where there's prognostic significance to a periprocedural infarction? I'm sure we could. But in the larger sense of looking at all PCIs, it's unlikely that group is going to be substantially large enough to drive any utility of routine monitoring. Perhaps the data would be valuable for quality assurance. That is to say, if my procedures always are associated with elevations in troponin and Dr. Alpert's are not, and we're both past our, the stage in our career where we go to the cath lab anymore, fortunately for patients, I suspect, uh, then perhaps it would be worth knowing that, and this could be something that we could look at. It's also likely, if you had enough patients, maybe 20 or 30,000, that having a minor degree of an elevation from even from a normal baseline would be better in one sense or the other, right, even with a good procedure done. But it's going to be very hard to show prognostic significance in that setting. No one's published data using high sensitivity yet, but the word on the street is that this trend, this idea of the baseline value being so prognostic and overcoming almost all of the values that occur post-PCI is what people think is going to occur. And I, I can't show you chapter and verse for that, but I think that's where we're going. And we ought to need to assess some of the other data in this, where periprocedural MI drove the outcomes. For example, I did a back of the envelope analysis of ictus. You may remember that the vast majority of patients had elevated troponins. If one eliminates the early hazard associated with post-procedural PCI definition, which was based on an increased CKMB, despite the fact that patients to get in had to have an elevated troponin, then ictus turns out to be a trial that is positive for PCI rather than null as it has been called. Same thing, there are a large number of trials where the endpoints have been driven by periprocedural MI, almost all of them included in that meta-analysis that, that shows you the importance of the baseline and the fact that most studies haven't used it. So we need to go back, and they're very likely data sets. I've asked Christian to look at the Duke ones, to look at this in groups that were treated with delayed PCI, where we could actually define to a greater extent whether or not how many of these periprocedural MIs really are simply the evolution of the baseline elevation that brought people in. I hope this has been helpful, but I'll close with this statement from Enrico Fermi. All right, thank you, Alan.